Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome to a very interestingly painted Hydra. In today's episode, we are going to be making one more part of our Chaos Fleet, and today we are going to be making something Slanesh-based. Now, Slanesh is the god of excess, and he likes his clashing colours. This is an adapted version of the paint scheme of the Emperor's Children, one of the main legions in Warhammer 40k lore, which do indeed serve Slanesh. They have pink, blacks, dark grey, golds, stuff like that which clashes excessively, since their brains can only even pick up the most excessive of stimuli. So very loud music, very interesting paint schemes, a lot of stuff like that. So what we're going to do is go with the whole excessive element of Slanesh and use the sub-vehicle spawners with the Hydra to spawn in a load of really small thruster craft. Now these thruster craft are going to be very similar to the flying squirrel of the Deepwater Guard. Very quick, very hard to hit with a lot of traditional weaponry, but not the most powerful and quite fragile, but thankfully all also very cheap. Now the reason why we are even using the sub-vehicle spawner rather than just spawning in these custom-made thruster craft straight into the game is this way we can have a set amount of thruster craft each with their own unique elements. For instance they can have a separate AI setup so they will never ram into each other, they can have separate weaponry, there's a lot of little things we can do so as we make them we are going to save them as thruster craft 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in I think of a permanent name and they will all be attached to this poor poor Hydra. Now the one problem is the Hydra is a little bit outdated. I still want to use it because we captured it so I want to have a corrupt version of it but it may take a little bit of work. So I will be right back once I have fitted the Hydra to actually use all of these things and then we are going to make our tiny little thruster craft swarm. Well, that did not take as long as I was expecting. Thankfully, there is quite a lot of empty space in the Hydra itself. We now have a grand total of 10 sub-vehicle spawners on the Hydra, which means, of course, it can hold 10 of the thruster craft, which I think is a pretty good number. Now, the reason why we're not using the docking station is because I never really want this thing to ever hold the thruster craft, only to act as a sort of stabilizing agent, being able to spawn them all in around it, so at least I have some control there. And of course, to be able to heal them, but that's it. I don't really want to add 10 docking stations, adding an extra 2,000 materials to the craft, when honestly, it wouldn't really give us any benefits. Perhaps we will make a proper aircraft carrier in the future, but for now, this is sort of just the swarm mother. Okay, so after a little bit of testing using the flying squirrel and messing around with it, I have came to one very annoying conclusion. We cannot have that many flying squirrel-like vehicles in the air without them killing each other, because I want a lot of them. I want a true swarm. So instead, we are going to make a more standard plane, which will be able to roll and use that for its turning. So it's not quite a thruster craft, but it's not going to be completely erratic. So it will be a little bit easier to kill, but it will play a lot nicer with all of the other planes. I can't believe I've already changed my mind this quickly into a video. Okay, testing out the first prototype now. Admittedly, right now, it looks more like a bee than anything, and honestly, I do quite like the yellow and black colour scheme. So the reason why it's so really weirdly rocky is that right now, it has only the very, very basics inside of it, and so it's sort of overcompensating every single movement. But this is about the size I'm thinking of. It's actually really small. It looks slightly larger than it really is, but 
Yeah, 231 volume, of course it doesn't have the weaponry or ammo yet, but even once that's added, I can't imagine it going over maybe 350, and maybe going up to 4,000, 5,000 in terms of cost. It will of course be using missiles, because they're just the better weapon for very compact builds. Unless you go into the simple weapons, things like the laser and the autocannon can actually be really good these days, but either way, I would like a swarm of missiles. Releasing the bees from the bees. That is so weird. Okay, some very basic controls now in place, and let's see how this does. So it should straighten out and then turn around at, I think, 300 meters away? There we go, and then going for the next attack run. Still not perfect, obviously it's doing this weird lean thing, that's just because I'm still messing around with stuff, but yep, that's working perfectly and staying on its own level, which is the most important part, since we are going to have several of these, and each will take up, I think... I think I'm going to have them about 20 meters apart. So the idea is there'll be a swarm of these all above the target doing this really annoying little circling thing. Okay, actually very happy with that. Not sure about the speed though, it looks very steady and very calm. It's been so long since I've made a more regular plane, which doesn't use all of the PID stuff, that this is kind of bizarre honestly. But still, if it works, it works. Now we have Prototype A and Prototype B. So Prototype B is going to be set up to go a little bit further away from the target, not quite go above it, and stay a little bit higher. Prototype A is the original, which goes directly above and will be the very lowest we spawn. So this one, we could actually give regular bombs, either giving them some form of magnetic mine, or just some form of cram bomb, or something like that. The high higher up versions will have to use missiles though, otherwise they will simply drop bombs on their allies, and that wouldn't be too great. I'm also considering giving them all repair tentacles, because that way when they cross over the enemy, they will have a chance to heal each other up, so any minor damage can be removed. Although honestly, these are going to be really frail. One good shot and they go down. And because of that, I will be adding some smoke defenses so that at least lasers can be a little bit less effective. So I've been tweaking all of the systems inside and I've decided I want the craft to fly like this. Why do I want it to fly like this? Because honestly, it's just amusing me. It's perfectly keeping altitude, it's just leaning forwards, which looks... Really, really odd. Of course, the front isn't done yet with this jet engine simply exposed, but either way, we are getting very close now. And I'm about to test out the basic lasers. So these are the simple weapon version of the laser weapon. So let's spawn in a Marauder and see how it actually does. There it is. And will it actually work is the question. I can hear it charging up. And that was kind of awful. Honestly, what was up with that aim? Ah, no, we're already overriding. That's just really bad aim. Well done there, Craft. There we go, actually doing some damage this time. Yeah, with how much this craft moves, having it on the bottom like this isn't really going to work out. We could also use the simple auto cannons or something else, but... Yeah, so far missiles are looking more and more likely. Or perhaps we could have it so that this craft goes a little bit further away from the target, so the attack run is a little bit extended. The very first test fire, and by the looks of things, it worked exactly as intended, firing the missiles upon starting to turn towards the target. Although it does seem like two of the missiles were slightly out of range there, so maybe a few more limitations are needed. Still, working exactly as intended.
Well, that was a lot faster than expected. I was hoping to get a bit more footage there, but here we see all of our crafts working together as a lovely little team to simply gang up on this poor, poor Marauder. So each of these have slightly different settings. The main setting difference, as I was speaking about earlier, is that they fly at different heights. Other than that, they have different missiles and go at different levels away from target, as you can see by this fellow all the way over here, which has more or cruise missile type missiles, whereas the ones closer have much more agile but much weaker missiles. So everything is going according to plan. I'm actually surprised by how easily it is to get all of these working together. Now, thankfully, each of these are still remarkably cheap, being just over 4,000 materials each. That's the equivalent of only two of our nukes and nothing more. So if we lost this entire fleet, it's absolutely nothing. It's no real damage to us. Their main purpose is to be a really annoying little distraction and not much else. And also just something very fun to watch swarm the enemy. Now it's time for one of the final tests before we get back into the campaign, spawn this in finally and face off against the Twin Guard. So let's see if this will indeed spawn in A, B, C, D, E, and F. That was weird, for some reason my cameras got threw off there, but yep, they all spawned in. Let's make sure they don't crash into each other. A few changes need to be made for the top forces there to be a little bit further away. Same for you two, but thankfully they should be splitting off now as they all descend into their normal cruising altitudes. Yeah, definitely something needs to be done there. That is way too close to each other. They shouldn't actually crash because they shouldn't intercept each other, but either way, that's a little bit too risky. Then glorious excessive missiles for all. Yeah, a little bit further out for everyone. But still, a great first test. I think that's enough testing for one day. It's now time to move on and fight the Twin Guard, which of course are over here. Now, a lot of their fortifications are currently along this island, but I've got a hunch they are going to be mostly situated in the corner. At least, I'm really hoping so, because that means a lot more fights away from the shore and any rocky outcroppings. So now we have a ridiculous amount of resources per second, we have yet another unlimited resource zone, and so we should probably be able to make quite a sizable navy very, very quickly. There's the Hydra, the Changebringers, one of the Plague Guard, which still hasn't been renamed. Okay, pretty much all of you Please move on over towards the Twin Guard. Now that's just annoying. Do I have to really fight through some Onyx Watch to get here? Otherwise I have to go all the way around. Well, some Onyx Watch Rebels are still there, so it's time for us to clean up. However, we could test out our new aircraft. I think that seems reasonable. Now, one thing I've just considered is that we really should have added some hot air balloon deployers to our Seekers. The reason is they are going to be shot down into the water quite a lot, but with their ability to heal each other, they could potentially get back into the air and continue to battle. At the moment, they simply can't do that, so something I'm aware of and will likely change later. Right now, I just want to see them in an actual fight. Well, a little bit of good news. Because the original craft, the Hydra, isn't really acting like a mothership since it isn't making the Seekers and it also isn't holding them, when it comes to actual battles, it doesn't really matter that this thing has vehicle spawners because as you can see, you can place them absolutely everywhere. So so that was me misunderstanding one of the basic mechanics, which I'm very, very happy I did. Now against us, we do have the trebuchet, so we're going to lose this fight. There's the thing. We will lose it. We have only 5,000 total volume in our entire force. 
that's absolutely nothing. We also have much cheaper vehicles than the enemy. The trebuchet itself is three times as expensive as my entire force here, so it's going to go terribly. But we're going to have some fun. Also, I have named them Seekers because A, it was a suggestion over on Twitter. Please follow me there if you'd like to see what I'm up to, especially from the depths. But also, the Seekers of Slanesh are indeed a force of Slanesh, one of their main demons. Which are very quick, very nimble, and fairly frail. Which I think the Seekers are pretty much so. Let's begin. Go forth, my glorious distractions, and do your work. Please, please focus on the trebuchet. Now, the problem is we are using missiles, so we don't really get to choose our targets, but even so. The Hydra being focused on by the trebuchet, that's okay, actually, since the Hydra does have shields. Lots of missiles hitting the trebuchet to actually decent effect. One of the ammo stores did just go up. That's it, swarm it. Almost knocked out one of the main turrets there. We are here as a distraction and nothing more. Be annoyed by us. On the upside, that does look very, very cool. Thankfully, the missiles are not being distracted by those flares, as they don't seem to have radars on them. The Hydra doing okay, actually. I did get a little bit of time to work on the Hydra. And I'm happy to see how it's working. Missiles are nowhere near as powerful as they used to be. I think that's mostly because of the armor changes and the fragment changes, if the fragment changes are even live yet. How are we doing? Surprisingly well, actually. It seems like the enemies can't really fire at our little distraction guys. They are the Onyx Watch, after all. And the Hydra is doing really well against the Trebuchet, with, with its new better shields. As you can see, as a shell goes into space. I think we will actually win this. Hurrah for countering them! Yeah, those missiles need to be changed. Those are almost worthless. They have finally got through, at least the armor there, but yeah. Maybe torpedoes would be better. Actually, yeah, we could swap out a couple of the Seekers for torpedoes rather than missiles. That would be interesting. Someone take out that main turret already. Even if it does look really cool. How's the Hydra doing? Come on, Hydra. You are Lathrixian Rosefall Engineering. You lovely, lovely little hybrid, you. Do us proud. At least I think the Hydra is a Rosefall design. Anyway, just kill this darn thing. Seems like those two are down, at least. The two front turrets. You're just never going to hit anything, and you're just turned off. You, on the other hand... Oh, beautiful! One missile went through and knocked out one of the guns. Well, they proved annoying. So annoying, the enemy exploded. And the other good thing with these things is, if I can figure out which one's where, I can actually use these very easily as capturing vehicles. So we are about to get a trebuchet. Hopefully. Oh, no, we're not. It's already too damaged. My honor rules be damned. Well, either way, they will act like really good capturing vehicles when I'm actually thinking about capturing and not simply watching the combat. And this is why we need balloons! And, of course, they are still healing each other. Which is really, really awesome. That may be one of the reasons the Hydra did so well there as well. It was being healed the entire fight. Time to test out the balloon deployers. Hopefully this is going to work. 
And there we go. Balloons are up. And are we out of the water enough? Yes, we are. And once we go above 30, they simply turn off. Wonderful. That was absolutely perfect. Okay, so that's what we're going to do then. We're going to make it so each of the different seeker types all have this balloon system in place. Wonderful. Aha, so I can see our next goal. There it is, the Twin Guard Earth Terminal, which of course is one of their resource zones, but also it's in the middle of the ocean, which makes the fight a lot easier for me, since of course I am still using the Change Bringers, which are less than happy to be around land. Let's just say that. And so, Twin Guard, you are the next who will soon be joining the Legion. And with that, we are now allied with the Scarlet Dawn. I'm okay with this. In fact, let's just insult everyone who isn't the Scarlet Dawn for a second. And that way, we're going to get a really stupidly high amount of reputation with the Scarlet Dawn. There we go, and thankfully, because these guys hate each other somewhat, every time we insult one, some of the others start liking us more, which then we can insult. It's a very weird system, and hopefully in the future there will be a proper ally system in this game, because that would be awesome. It was so sad that we had to take over the Onyx Watch lands for their own good. They were hurting themselves, and we, being the good guys, had to step in. First battle versus the Twin Guard, and I'm a little bit shocked here. We have the Abyss twice. This is over 1,100,000 resources with only two of these vehicles. We then have the Phoenix, which is almost 200,000, and the Shock, which is just shy of 20,000. That is actually unbelievable. One of these Abyss pretty much add up to my entire force count in terms of cost. Actually, would it? 120, 120? Yeah, it would actually be more, with the change bringers only bringing in about 60,000 resource each. My god, that is absolutely horrendous. Do I want to bring in the Medran Guard? I don't want to. Let's see if we can win with such a ridiculous... Ridiculous disadvantage when it comes to force count. I meant resource count then, but actually we have the disadvantage for both. They have just under double our force count. So, apparently the enemy have really big lasers. Which is just lovely. They also have torpedoes, which is going to be a real nuisance for our plague guard. They have at least one parcel cannon, I think from the shock. And, yeah. Also, one of the change bringers is trying to fly. I have no idea why. It's just happening. Don't question it. It fancied a bit of a change, perhaps. My god, the lag from these abyss is awful. Okay, our lasers are making quite short work, at least, of the enemy shock, which is great to see. The two plague guard have just fired. Hopefully that volley will do something. I don't know how big the enemy missiles are. And by missiles, I meant to say shields. Also, look, it's one of the little flyers we stole from the enemy fortress. Isn't it adorable? The fortress can actually still keep on making those on a side note. It still has the thing saved. Okay, our smoke dispensers have gone off, so... Not that much damage from the enemy lasers, at least. Okay, one of the enemy are spawning in something? It's hard to see with this light show. I am not a huge fan of the new laser effects, got to be honest. Especially when it comes to the munition defense. A lot of, a lot of healing is being done from the Seekers. Incoming once again, the cram cannons, hopefully going to do something. Oh, the enemy munition defense is vile, taking out a load of those shells. Thankfully, our torpedoes, though, are still getting to them, and they have rammed each other. Perhaps that is indeed the source of this ungodly lag. Okay, a couple of hits that time, at least, from the cram cannons. I haven't seen any missiles actually hit yet, which is really, really annoying to see. The lasers are doing okay, actually. The lasers are doing quite a bit of damage. 
Although they are trying to focus on the little things, which are very annoying. Actually, no it's not. They haven't allowed the enemy to spawn in a single thing yet. But look at that healing. That is a ridiculous amount of healing there. So I have been told by someone that the enemy don't actually have unlimited materials. They only have what they have on the vehicle. Essentially, they are working with localized resources. So when it comes to healing that much, they should burn themselves out over time. It's not like they can do that forever. So if it does become a very, very ooh, drawn out battle, it shouldn't be that, that bad. At least that's the idea. I can't quite tell what the enemy firepower really is. It's just those lasers, but they're not really doing all that much. Admittedly, once again, as you can see, the smoke dispensers are really, really doing well. It seems like both of the enemy abyss are both focusing on the plague guard, which are just happily absorbing those lasers to a great effect. So for people who do say lasers are overpowered, they're just good against things which don't counter them. If, But you can very easily counter lasers. Probably easier than a lot of other things. I would say missiles and lasers are definitely the easiest to flat out counter. Then cram cannons, and then right at the bottom would be advanced cannons with stacked shields and stuff, depending on the cannon shells. Torpedoes doing great there on the side. Cutting down the abyss slowly. The self-healing, well, the healing from each other, from our Seekers, is really doing well. The Hydra, on the other hand, though, isn't looking too great. That small advanced cannon is really cutting through the shields. I think what we need to focus on is this little guy. Maybe. It's hard to tell, honestly. This is a very weird fight. Surprised that we're not seeing any of the Twin Guard mechs. Also, that first cram cannon shell, not the second, actually did quite a lot there, knocking out a large chunk. It seems like they're no, they're, they are no longer healing each other, so already running out of materials. Of course, the enemy need to use localized and not centralized, otherwise then it would be an issue of unlimited resources, and then that would just be weird. I think just firing at everything is actually working the best right now, so focus firing wouldn't be any good. Oh, come on! One of the flyers, go near that seeker, it desperately needs healing. Also, the enemy laser is missing our flyers quite a lot. Hurrah for not being all that good at aiming. Yes, that's it, heal each other! Heal it back! You only have a few seconds, stay close! Nope, sadly one of the seekers has been taken out. Have been taken out. English, yo. Yeah. Thankfully, they are hurting each other with the lasers, which is always good. Uh-oh. That can't be the Plague Guard. No, it's one of the Seekers. It's crashed nearby. Okay. The Seekers are doing okay, actually, but the Plague Guard are definitely carrying this. The Changebringer's doing quite a bit of damage over time. I have underestimated the Seekers' ability to fly when damaged. I really have. Several of them went down to 70% before receiving healing, and they were still flying and fighting as you would expect. I really thought if they had lost even just a few percentage, they would be out. Oh, that was a lovely shot, taking out the corner of that craft. Oh, you just took some internal damage and you were bounced quite far, most likely from the torpedoes of the Plague Guard. I'm still very thankful they are focusing on the Plague Guard more than anything. Once again, look at all that smoke. Admittedly, some of that smoke is coming from the cannons themselves, but some of it is the smoke dispensers. It's actually quite hard to tell. I'm still not used to the effects properly. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, it's spawning in craft again. So far, still, they haven't been able to really spawn in anything. Okay, I think target swapping might be good now. Nope, still best to focus on this thing. It's still trying to spawn in things. Although, it is looking very, very unhealthy right now. How's the health doing? One of the change bringers is badly damaged. Other than that, everything looks okay. One of the plague guard as well is looking a little bit hurt. Which isn't a surprise, considering they have been focused on since the battle started. 
I love when the Seekers fire their missiles on the turn. It just looks so cool. Really happy with those. That's interesting. The enemy abyss seems to be really struggling for power. I don't know what we've taken out, but I'm going to assume it's one of the engines. Oh, uh, well, with all of these batteries being exposed, yet we have definitely damaged this engine. Its shields and its munition defense have both been heavily weakened. As you can see by the cram cannon just going straight through. One of the other enemies are also now too destroyed. And so, this abyss is looking really, really bad. Even its weapons are practically offline. Changebringer, have you knocked out one of my plate guard? Friendly fire! Well, I'm getting out of here. Before I drown. Not that you can drown, but still- Look at that! Also, I'm kind of upside down myself. Seriously though, Changebringer, you are definitely the least effective of all of these forces. Well, there's the Abyss. I guess I'll jump on board. The Seekers are now swapping targets and also fo focusing on the Abyss. How's the other player guard doing? The one which isn't sinking because of friendly fire. This is the issue when you have so many forces. I don't actually know why it got so close. I'm thinking that's the one that randomly started flying at the start of the battle. Um, hello? Bit stuck here. Can I do anything, please? Someone, help? There we go. Well, I have found the AI at least, so I can make a go of it. I am actually going to start trying to capture it because its weapons, other than these missiles, are already offline. It's near death as it is. Whilst I'm capturing, I may as well force our forces to fight off against the other Abyss, which also seems to be having the same types of issues, except for this one has lost pretty much all of its turrets. Yeah. Engaging now. Except for that one and the main one at the front, but a lot of the other stuff has been removed. AI is down, and of course it does have at least one more. Well, at least one has been removed. And now begins the fun of trying to find the others. Also, on the other upside, one of the plague guards, the one which was pushed down because of the change bringer, is now back up on the surface and happily firing away. Also, three of the seekers are still alive. I am actually surprised by this. And we have found the next mainframe, which hopefully will be the last one. The other abyss is now down, and sadly, I got killed by one of the lasers firing from the abyss we were just on board of. Now, normally, I wouldn't try and capture this thing since it is technically still firing, but as you can see, it's not even hitting the target. And when it does, it's doing no real damage. It's just sitting there putting on a very pretty light show. Oh no, one of our flyers got knocked out. I don't know which one. I'm hoping it wasn't one of the Seekers. Doesn't look like it was, but it could have been. Okay, everyone stop. We don't want to kill this abyss, so we'll be there in just a second. Let's take a more pretty route towards the enemy instead. Those laser shots are going everywhere. Oh, it actually did a tiny bit of damage. My lord, well done to the enemy abyss. And three, two, one, whee! Hello there. And it worked, even if I did manage to kill myself, it actually worked. Well then. Apparently it's here, I'm guessing it despawned. Right. Right, begin battle? Begin battle with who? Um, what's going on? Cancel battle. I don't know what's going on there, but either way, spawn in, and let's see what we've got to work with then. Oh, that looks nice in our colours. Already representing corn a bit there, although, yeah, you are losing a bit of your um, balance there, buddy. 
Rise from the depths. Damn, this thing is bigger than I expected. So, during that battle, I've got to say, the enemy didn't do as well as I was expecting. I vaguely remembered the Abyss from the past, but only vaguely. I remember being terrified by this thing. Now, I'm not trying to insult the craft, obviously, but something went wrong for it in that fight. And what I think happened was the, the lasers, which are the main weapons, focused on the plague guard, which just couldn't be damaged, and then when it focused on the flyers, its detection system didn't seem to be good enough. The lasers were just not hitting the target, even at medium range. And honestly, the Seekers are not the most agile of small flyers, so I think we're going to have to have a look at this craft to see what happened. Because this thing is glorious. Look at it. Torpedoes, the ability to make some form of other craft, and that's the other thing. With the cram cannon explosions, the lasers from the change bringers, and the torpedoes, these lovely areas down here, which of course are what spawn the torpedoes, the submarines in the first place, just weren't actually working. So where is the spawner anyway? There's a good question. Where is the vehicle spawner? And more importantly, do we now then have the ability to spawn in one of these smaller subs? It looks like they've all just been completely taken out. I'm hoping when it gets repaired, we can still keep it. Now fully repaired, let's have another look. So, where are the spawners? Um, I know they're down here somewhere. That's why it has the repair tentacles down here. But where is it? Am I going blind here, or are they not here? Like, they have to be here, because they were spawning in things during the fight, or at least trying to. I believe this is actually working. Okay, let's find out. Oh, I heard healing. What are you making? Definitely not one of mine. Yep, it's a tiny little submarine. We can actually make these during combat now. Oh, that is beautiful. That is absolutely freaking wonderful. And so the swarm continues. So with that, and on a very positive note, with our airplanes working absolutely perfectly, and a lovely abyss now in our arsenal ready to be converted to one of the Dark Gods, I am very, very happy with the start of our war versus the Twin Guard. So if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I have a lot of conversion work to get done. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.